So, my fellow meatbags, what a year this has been! So many great music releases, and I've got a ton of honorable mentions that I want to go through real fast before I talk about the top 10. And we will start right now because there's a lot to go through. So we'll start right now with Veteran by JPEG Mafia. It's a hip hop album with um with some of the best beats that I've heard in recent rap music. The production is really, really great, but the lyrics and the flow are weird, edgy, kind of cringy also. Next is Vile Luxury by Imperial Triumphant, which will give you a feeling that there's an army of demons crawling through your speakers. Pretty neat. Uh, I liked the music, but also it seemed like it was strange for the sake of being strange, and the musicality was sometimes lost in the process, in my opinion. Uh, it's a collection of tracks that are great to put in a mixtape or in a playlist. It's a bit too weird for me to focus my attention on it for more than 10 minutes. Next is Geometria by Thay Kerfalk from Hungary, I think. And um, yeah, it's a really interesting blend of uh, metal, electronic music, uh, pop and a lot of different stuff. Uh, it reminded me of Ulver at some times, and it reminded me of Unexpect also, when it goes a little proggy. It's interesting, It I felt like it lacked polish, and it uh, felt a little amateurish to me, but it was an interesting listen, and I, I enjoyed it. Next is Konoyo by Team Hacker. It's a really interesting ambient release uh, that is heavily influenced by traditional Japanese music, and it's an interesting ambient release in that it's not the kind of ambient that you usually have that is relaxing and for meditation and stuff. It's a sharp kind of ambient, even shrill at times, and um, that makes it pretty special. Next, uh, Leather Teeth by Carpenter Brut. Uh, it's, in my opinion, the worst release by Carpenter Brut, but this band is so great that their worst release is still pretty good. It's synthwave, and it's, yeah, it's more than decent. Next is Time by Louis Cole. Once again, not my favorite release by Louis Cole, but he's so great that it's still pretty good. It's like Wolfpack, but better, and uh, I prefer Louis Cole in uh, Nowhere anyway, but this was nice. Next is Diluvium by Obscura. Uh, German technical death metal that takes a lot of cues from modern prog metal. And it's not prog, but you can tell that they're inspired by a lot of modern prog bands and that colors their sound in a really interesting way. Next is uh, Noir by VNV Nation uh, that takes a lot of inspiration from the popular music of the 80s. Uh, you can hear a lot of Depeche Mode in there and some The Cure and some David Bowie and, you know, some Eurythmics. Uh, but it's really with a modern sound and it's it's really well made. Next is uh, Dark All Day by Gunship. It's Synthwave. There's nothing really special about this album. It's just good. It's just good Synthwave. It's not the really... Uh, aggressive synthwave or the really mellow synthwave like uh, Mitch Murder. It's kind of in between. It sounds a lot like Perturbator in my opinion. Next is Where Owls Know My Name by Rivers of Nihil. Uh, it's death metal with a lot of elements from a lot of different genres. Uh, you've got a, a lot of 80s nostalgia in there too, like in a lot of albums this year. Uh, in the keyboards, in the sax solo, sax solos in death metal, yeah. Smooth jazz sax solos that go really well with this music that is kinda, it kinda defies, you know, genres. It's not really death metal, but, uh, but it's really a blend of uh, a lot of stuff that is painted on a death metal canvas. And uh, the lyrics are really good. The, the the music is really good from start to finish. It's it's a great album. Next is Noise by Ghost Main. Uh, it's a blend of hip hop, 
uh, uh, experimental pop music and noise, just like the uh, title suggests. Yeah, that's about it, and it's pretty damn good. Next is A Stranger Fruit by Zeal and Ardor, an audacious blend of blues and spirituals and black metal. So they mixed the black music with the black music, and the result is really black, just like a cup of coffee. This album is really like a cup of coffee. The blues warms you inside, the metal wakes you up, and it's all really bitter, but not its a flow, rather an acquired taste. I appreciated it a lot. Next is uh, How Fleeting, How Fragile by Time the Value Wearer. And it's a blend of modern prog and metalcore, kinda. I don't want to say it's gent because it's not gent, but you know what? It sounds a lot like Periphery. You like Periphery? You will love this. You don't? You won't. That's it. Next is Efflores by Covet, and it's an album of really chill and fresh instrumental math rock. Next is Above All Dreams by Abul Mogard. Uh, it's a very contemplative and meditative uh, ambient album. It's great for, you know, falling asleep and having nice dreams. Uh, next uh, is The Wake by the French Canadians of Voivod, who are still making music after all these years. I think it's their 18th release, and it's one of their best. This album blends everything that classic heavy metal has best about it, and it feels like they took all the original soundtrack from Brutal Legend and concentrated it into one album. Really nice release. Next is Haru Toshura by Haru Nemuri. It's a noise rock Japanese uh, album that has kind of a loose feel to it. I don't really have another word for it. It, it has a looser feel to it. Fun and loose and you, you can tell that uh, they, they had a lot of fun making it. Next is Yeah Whatever by Owane. And um, it's uh, the backing tracks are kind of weird and in bad taste. You can tell that there's a lot of MIDI in there, uh, but uh, it has some great guitar work, some really, really delicious guitars. Uh, I I've seen people online compare uh, this guy to Joe Satriani uh, or Steve Vai, you know, and uh, yeah, I feel that it's kind of deserved. Uh, these really great guitars on some weird ass tracks and it works pretty well. Next is Singularity by John Hopkins, an ambient -y, kind of experimental uh, ex electronic music album. Uh, you, you can tell that their inspiration was all over the place. I heard stuff that reminded me of FX Twin, Massive Attack, Boards of Canada, The Chemical Brothers, Brian Eno, and it's really well made, it sounds great, it's super chill. Next is um, Future Me Hates Me by The Beths. It's a pop rock that is kind of different from the usual pop rock. I would say that it's maybe pop grunge. And it's an album that is kind of like a Mario game, you know. There's nothing revolutionary about it, it won't blow your mind, but it's fun and good from start to finish with never a dull moment. And uh, there are some pretty relatable lyrics in there too. Next is uh, Jord by M Mull. And uh, what is there to say about it except that it's Black Gaze? And it's a very Black Gaze uh, album. You love Sunbather by Dev Heaven? This sounds a lot like Sunbather by Dev Heaven. Next is Zonder by Tesseract. I don't want to say the D word again. Uh, it's not really gent, but you know, it sounds. Kinda like Periphery again, um, like it, but it, it has some great um, songs, some really nice element, it's well crafted, it's a good album, 
of really modern prog metal. Next is Ill Considered 3 by Ill Considered, a really fresh and cool modern jazz album for people who like bands such as uh, the S. Bjorn Svensson Trio, uh, Steve Coleman and Five Elements, or uh, Avishai Cohen. Uh, if you like modern street-ish jazz, this is for you. Next is Queen of Time by Amorphis. Uh, it's a progressive metal, but it's mixed with old prog elements and some folk stuff, uh, like Celtic uh, music. It reminded me a lot of Iron. Uh, and a little bit of Dream Theater too. Next is uh, Artificial Selection by Dance Gavin Dance. It's post hardcore, uh, but with really, really great vocals, really interesting vocals uh, for, for, for a post hardcore band. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Next is I the Tide by Space. Slug. Uh, it's a mix of stoner metal and doom metal and with a little space rock uh, on it. It has a really great sound and uh, yeah, it's super chill. Next is Annihilated by Sectioned. A uh, very brutal uh, metal album and very chaotic. Uh, most uh, The most chaotic album that I've heard this year. And uh, really, for, for uh, amateurs of really brutal metal music. Uh, next is uh, Eat the Elephant by A Perfect Circle, the logical next step uh, in their uh, music uh, evolution. People who like the softest part of the 13th step will love it. Uh, it, go, it does away with a lot of the hard rock elements that were uh, prominent in Mer de Non, their first LP. And some fans will hate it, some fans will love that, but yeah, it's the logical next step in their musical evolution. Lots of piano, lots of ballads. You can feel that there's a lot of energy, but that it's never really released, you know, it's more like implied. Uh, and uh, vocals by Maynard are better than ever. Uh, I love his voice on this album. Next is A Patient Man by Colt Litter. It's um, hardcore punk, but it sounds a lot like metal. And also there's some ballads in there that sound like what Nick Cave used to do, you know. Uh, this kind of music, there's a lot of different... Um, facets to this album and it's really interesting. Uh, it's perhaps the most interesting hardcore punk album that I've ever heard. Next is uh, Vector by Hacken, an album that conglomerates uh, everything good that prog metal has been doing recently. You can tell that there's a lot of dream theater in there, especially in the keyboard part when the keyboardist goes full Jordan Rudess on more than one occasion. Uh, you can tell that it takes cues for what I think is Closure in Moscow. It reminded me of Closure in Moscow a lot of times. Uh, Periphery 2, the album was produced by Adam Get Good and it shows. And yeah, if you like all these bands, if you like modern prog metal, you will love this. Next is Bad Witch by Nine Inch Nails, a Nine Inch Nails album that doesn't really sound like Nine Inch Nails. Uh, it feels to me that maybe this album was made one late night by Trent Reznor alone in the studio and he had a little too much alcohol or weed or both and uh, he started making music. This has a lot of uh, a loose feel to it. I don't know how to say it, um, you know, um, another way. The loss of saxophone parts, which is surprising for a uh, Nine Inch Nails um, release, but yeah, it's chill and it's really well made. Love, I love the sound, and um, that's it. Next is New Levels, New Devils by Polyphia, and it's a math rock album with trap beats. A uh, combination that I wouldn't have thought of and that works really, really well, in my opinion. It's really fresh. It's not high art, you know, it's more on the entertainment side of music. But it's super fun and uh, I loved it. And at number 10, we have All Ashore 
by the Punch Brothers. I've been a fan of Chris Thyle for a long time and everything that he releases uh, in any of his bands uh, is always great to my ears. This is not the best release by the Punch Brothers, but one of the best in my opinion. It's really great if you like progressive bluegrass, if you like folk music and uh, musicianship is really tight. Uh, the compositions are, are beautiful. It's uh, pure uh, Chris style and pure Punch Brothers music. Uh, if you like that kind of music, you will likely be delighted. Next is Bran Coucou by Pignol. Uh, it's completely crazy progressive rock that is reminiscent of stuff like Gong, you know, and Magma. Uh, it's really French and uh, it's really crazy for people who like prog, like the, the really experimental prog of the 70s uh, that were mixed with uh, psychedelic music and uh, a lot of weird stuff. Uh, you will likely love this. Next is Mira by Spurv. Uh, it's uh, post metal. Uh, and it sounds a lot like um, ISIS, the, the band, not the terrorist group, uh, and also Neurosis, uh, more Neurosis than, than, than ISIS, the, yes, and uh, Cult of Luna, you know, these kind of bands, but it also sounds a lot like bands like Mogwai. Uh, it's uh, a blend of post-metal and post-rock, and there's also, you know, it reminded me a lot of Godspeed You Black Emperor, uh, which is a great compliment, of course, and it's really beautiful, it's chill, there's a, there's some slow core in there for people who like, you know, uh, post music, especially post rock and post metal, it's a really great release. Next is Ordinary Corrupt Human Love by Deaf Heaven. Uh, I can't really tell what went on in the studio. The Deaf Heaven guys went uh, composing with uh, a dilemma in mind. They wanted to please their fans who liked them because of Sunbather, but they also wanted to make something new, new music that wasn't boring. They wanted to explore new horizons and they really brilliantly reconciled the two. It sounds like Deaf Heaven, but in new ways, they explored new sounds that is not like what they usually do. And yeah, it works quite well. Is it as good as Sunbather? In my opinion, no, but it's still pretty damn good. Next is Double Negative by Low. Uh, it's a very interesting album that reminded me of The Edge of Ads by Sufjan Stevens and 20 to a Million by Bon Iver. Uh, it's not really like those, but you, you can tell there's a lot in common. It's singer-songwriter music, but in a very different way, really noisy, droney, experimental, but still a singer-songwriter. Some beautiful melodies in there, some really interesting sounds. It's a, it's a really, uh, really enjoyable blend, really artistic in my opinion, and um, yeah, great album. Next is You Won't Get What You Want by Daughters. A very black album, a very dirty album with crazy guitars and, uh, you know, a, a really interesting sound uh, that you don't hear every day far from it. It's hard to really uh, describe and I would advise everyone to listen to it because it's really one of the most interesting releases of this year and it's, yeah, it's, it's a kind of music that you won't hear every day. Uh, a really dark album, gritty and super interesting and, and really well made. Uh, next is Black Heaven by Earthless. For people like me who discover Earthless through uh, tracks like Sonic Prayer or uh, stuff like that, you know, the 25 minute jam psychedelic stuff, uh, this is different. This feels like they've taken uh, Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and they mixed them together 
and it works so well because they've really taken the best aspects of Hendrix and of Zeppelin and it sounds not like some cover band, it sounds like it could have been one of the best releases of Hendrix or, or, or Led Zeppelin. Uh, especially, you know, the really Hendrixian guitars and really Zeppelin-esque uh, uh, drums. And, um, you know, it, it works super well. It's an album that, that, that surprised me by how great it sounds. Earthless reinvented themselves by looking back and they've, they've made a bomb. Uh, next is Both Directions at Once, the lost album by John Coltrane. One of the biggest surprises of the year for me. Uh, when uh, I heard about this lost album by Coltrane, I thought it would be, you know, some demos or some shit. And it ended up being maybe one of the best Coltrane albums that uh, ever were released. Uh, it I've listened to it uh, like uh, a hundred times and it still sounds fresh to me and it sounds so fresh you know it sounds uh, a really contemporary uh, which is surprising since this music was made more than 50 years ago and uh, I, I was blown away by the quality of the, the sound, the compositions, the everything. I mean, it's Coltrane. I know he's a genius. I know he's, he's uh, put out some incredible albums. And this is one of them. That's it. Next is Unloved by Frontierer. Uh, wow. Believe me or not, this album it gave me uh, a, a panic attack and hallucinations the first time I listened to it. Granted, I was sleep deprived, I was listening with headphones in a dark room, so this was not the best conditions to listen to this kind of music, which doesn't even have a name, it's new. I never heard anything like this before. It reminded me a little of Anal Nathrach. It reminded me of the Dillinger Escape Plan. It reminded me of Meshuga, but it's so much more extreme and brutal than all these bands combined. Really, I think that for this kind of music, you know, it goes beyond violence or it goes beyond brutality and it's just energy. It's just pure energy. It's like a nuclear explosion. It's absolutely a crazy level of magma. It feels like a volcano exploding in your ears. It's the most energetic record that I ever than I have ever laid ears on by a fucking landslide and I've been to crazy metal concerts where everyone uh, got out full of blood and uh, you know, I I I've heard a really really extreme shit in my time but this is a whole new level of... I don't even have a word for it it's like pure energy, you know, it's like stuff at the center of the atom exploding and uh, it feels incredible. I had to take breaks while I was listening to it. That's, that's the, the, the intensity was so crazy that after, uh, four, uh, after 15 minutes, I had to take, uh, almost to take a nap because I had been so much, you know, pummeled by the sound. It is insane. Listen to this. It might change your life. And the number one is... All Bitches Die by Lingua Ignota. This is also a crazy album. And it's also a, a new genre, maybe. Uh, there's some noise in there. There's some opera singing. It's, uh, it's perhaps one of the most artistic albums that I've heard in my entire life. Uh, it's, uh, you know, every music album, every kind of music has a part of entertainment and a part of art. And some music is more entertainment, like pop punk, for example, it's 90% entertainment or 95. And uh, some music, well, like Nirvana, would be 75% art, 25% entertainment. I don't exactly know. I'm just saying that, you know, to give you an idea, this is like pure art, 100% artistic. It is crazy good. 
the it is uh, one of the best albums I've ever heard and it's yeah it's like a, a new shape of singer songwriter it's it's really noisy and it's really beautiful and it's really well crafted you can tell that a lot of thought went into it you can tell that it was crafted with love and, and pain and uh, all that and uh, it completely blew my mind uh, it was originally released in 2017 but this is a re-release with uh, remastering and an, uh, uh, an additional track in the middle and uh, I, I really wanted to put it in there because I, you know, didn't hear about it last year and when I listened to it, it really blew my mind. It was, it's really, uh, you know, the, it was kind of a revelation. I have never really heard music like that before and I, I, I wish that uh, more albums in the future will be like this one because this was uh, a really almost like a religious experience, you know, uh, which given the theme of the album is kind of fitting, I guess. And that's it for my uh, top 10 of 2018. I haven't uh, listened to every album released in 2018, of course, but uh, yeah, if you feel like I've really missed something or if you want to discuss or uh, if you want like more uh, on, on anything, you, comments are there for that. I try to read all the comments and to uh, answer to everyone. And um, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you loved this video and want to help me continue doing what I do in the best possible conditions, consider subscribing on Patreon. That would be a huge help. It would be great. I really need it right now. And uh, that's all. Yeah, thanks again for watching, and see ya really soon. Peace!